the meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Take the roll, please. Trustee Bond. Here. Trustee Lee. Yes. Trustee Hines. Yay. Trustee Brawley. Yes. Trustee Keck. Yay. Yay. <clears throat> Under public participation this evening, this is a uh, public comments as a two-minute opportunity to address the board. Each speaker should state their name and ad address and then sign in and then have two minutes to speak. You, uh, I ask that you keep your remarks short and to the point. If there's a number of people talking on the same subject, perhaps you might want to uh, pick a, a, a spokesperson. Keep in mind that this is not a time to debate. There will not be any uh, questions and answers. The board will need time to research and consider questions or issues uh, raised. So you'll not be, most likely will not be receiving an immediate response from the board tonight. So with that, I'll open the public comments and uh, please go to the podium and State your name and address and sign in. Good evening. My name is State Representative Kay Hatcher, and I live in my car. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for allowing me to come for you this evening to speak for a few moments. Uh, tonight is no exception when you have a lot of very important things to discuss, but but I have something important too, and it's been through the collaboration of dozens and dozens of people. Now, our esteemed village president, Marilyn Michelini, believes that I'm about to give a legislative report. She's wrong. Uh, it isn't often that someone gives as many decades of service to the Fox Valley uh, as our village president has done. Uh, and so tonight, on behalf of the General Assembly and the State of Illinois, we're going to present her with an official resolution honoring the works that she has done. Uh, and it is, uh, it's actually gold trim. Now, since it's from Illinois, I doubt that it's real gold. <laughs> <laughs> but the message really is heartfelt. It's full of dozens of whereases and wherefores that spans the work you have done in the community, the work you have done in the county, the work you have done for this community, and in fact, much of the state with all the boards and influential places that you have been. I am grateful to have called you a friend. I'm grateful to have worked with you. And you know you're one of those rare public servants who realizes that, that understanding is better than grandstanding. So on behalf of everyone, thank you, Marilyn, for your years of service. Thank you to State Representative Kay Hatcher. We've been friends for years. I, I hate to uh, go back to, and tell you how many years. <laughs> but uh, she, she does a great job at Springfield. And she did take me entirely off guard tonight. I was telling her, you know, I'm going to limit you to time. I thought she was giving a very boring legislative update. <laughs> so so I, I was giving her, you know, instructing her, I should say. But uh, I, just, I just really, it is an honor and it is a privilege. And, and uh, you know, you I, I will have to admit, you like to be recognized. And uh, with that, I'll, uh, I'll say thanks to all of you and be sure and, and uh, give all my uh, thank yous to 
uh, the people in Springfield that I won't, won't be bugging them after this year, <laughs> going down and asking for various things. But anyway, thank you so much. This is a real, a real, real honor. That's a hard act to follow. <laughs> uh, with that, anybody that's here to speak tonight may, may come down to the podium. Uh, good evening. My name is John Beidelman. I live at 2186 Kathleen Circle in Lakewood Creek here in Montgomery. And I'm here tonight to express my opposition to the LED billboards being considered for installation in our community. I believe this is a big mistake and will do nothing but degrade our image. I'm requesting your support to uphold the Planning Commission's recommendation to deny the application for a special use permit to install an LED billboard on Orchard Road or anywhere else in the village for that matter. The property owner's only argument is that if he doesn't get his way, he will not allow any further use of his property for development. I find that argument extremely offensive and unworthy of your consideration. I checked out the MEDC's website and discovered that there are thousands of acres available uh, in the village for development as well as thousands of square feet of unused commercial space being promoted. I think the village should work on that before we commit to putting up unsightly billboards. Plus, we don't even know if the property would be conducive to commercial development since it is in a floodplain. It is my belief that if the special use is approved Many more re requests will come and the village will be hard pressed to deny them. And we will be saturated with more and more billboards. And where will it end? I don't want our community to look like what we see on interstate highways. It isn't a pretty sight as some may have suggested. It may be business friendly so far as bringing more billboards into our community but what we need are more businesses and no billboards. Please don't let this happen to our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mrs. Martins from Montgomery. As you get younger, you got to put the specs on. <laughs> I'm here, <clears throat> number one, Mayor Michelini, congratulations on a job well done. And congratulations for all the accolade that you're gonna receive today. I wanna thank you and the trustees for allowing me to speak. I moved out here from the city over 16 years ago. I was impressed by the friendliness, compassion, and family-oriented people. The flood of 96, which I was in, was a proving ground for my belief. I was also impressed coming from the city by the <coughs> election of trustees to speak on behalf of the people. I have somewhat studied the history of the founding fathers of Montgomery and found that they came from good stock, hardworking, and hold true to their beliefs of integrity, pride, and fair play. We have before us tonight an issue of changing an ordinance regarding the installation of large electrical signs, to be exact, 12 by 24 feet. These signs not only would be of no monetary gain for the village now or later, but they pose a serious concern for traffic safety and possible medical concern and a disruption of the serenity of surrounding residents. 
But what is my primary concern to me and many other residents is that the request was preempted by an outside source accompanied by intimidation, ultimatums, and finally a threat to our village. So in closing, I wish to say this is not in keeping with the makeup of the people in this village. So I would like, in behalf of many residents, to petition the board's consideration to vote this issue down, which would send a message to these people and any others that may follow. We in the village of Montgomery will not tolerate this form of coercion now or ever. Thank you. Good evening, Madam President and trustees of the village. My name is John Philipchuk. I'm an attorney with offices at 123 Water Street, Naperville, Illinois. I represent CBS Outdoor. We are, we are not affiliated with the discussion that took place earlier by some of the uh, residents uh, as far as the uh, sign over on Orchard Road, but we are faced with a similar circumstance uh, as part of the IDOT improvement of the interchange with uh, Route 30 and 31. Uh, one of the CBS outdoor signs is affected. Uh, we uh, kind of been a stepchild in this process of going through the text amendment. <coughs> we would like the opportunity to have this matter sent back to staff so that we could sit down and have some meetings with staff to go over uh, some of the criteria that they uh, used in coming up with their recommendations. And uh, I think we have some positive things to offer. Uh, contrary to what a couple of other opinions are, we think that uh, a step into the future if the board so chooses to look at the digital billboards is certainly something that has a great uh, safety factor uh, uh, that uh, can be a benefit to the village's residents uh, and not to mention public service announcements and things such as that because these signs as you know can be changed instantaneously uh, and so we think that uh, should be given good uh, consideration by the board so uh, those are my comments uh, I appreciate your consideration and again uh, on behalf of CBS, uh, we would like to see the matter sent back to staff for some further discussion and deliberations. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Linda Pacetti Olson. I'm a precinct committee person for AU4 which includes a large section of Montgomery. I've been um, at two other meetings and spoke out against this, so I know that everybody here knows that I am firmly against this sign. Um, over the past week, I decided to do a little bit of research on the, uh, on the uh, issue of Don Hammond, since he seems to be playing such a big part in this whole process. Um, when I, when I Googled the, the information, the one thing that really caught my attention was the way he acted in uh, the village of Yorkville in 2011 when he didn't get his way for a landfill ordinance. He actually sued the village. It cost that village over $1 million to defend itself in lawyer fees and court costs. I don't even know why we would want to do business with an individual like that. So I would ask that this board, this, these trustees consider not granting this ordinance, not passing this ordinance, and certainly think twice about entering into a business contract with someone like that. Thank you. Um, my name is Liz Copeland, 85 Winter Hill Circle in Montgomery, and I thank you, uh, Madam President and Trustees, for allowing me to speak. Um, I'm not a seasoned public speaker, but I'm going to try and do my best. I'm just going to attack this from an environmental standpoint. Do you know that we have a beautiful Fox River here? Do you know that we have people who are coming to see us because of the eagles that are here? 
Do you know that we have a restoration program in Montgomery where we're trying to attract migratory birds, bluebirds? If you put up big LED signs, they are creating what is called light pollution that does have a tendency to interrupt migration. We have wetland areas, Blackberry Forest Preserve. You have wetland birds that are there that will come back and continue to come back, that will draw people, that will draw interest to the Montgomery Village. And I say village with a lot of love because it is the smallness, the closeness of the community that draws people here. And I hope that you will take a look from the environmental standpoint and the richness that we have here along the river and not ruin it like some large city. If people wanted a large city, they can go to Aurora. But let's keep us pure. Thank you. Thank you. Greg Nelson, 219 Jefferson. Uh, many of you know that I'm running for trustee, so this is coming from two sides. One, as a business owner in this village, I'm really disappointed that we would do any kind of business with a person that would try to hold us ransom. That's just ridiculous. Uh, he did it in Yorkville. He's done it in all kinds of other municipalities. Hammond is just trying to bully us, and any time that somebody's going to bully us, there's nobody in any business form that would want to get behind anybody like that. And to Mr. Hammond, if that's the kind of business you're going to do, maybe every municipality in the state should know that's the kind of way you do business. As far as the LED system and, and things, it is a progress forward, but that's not Montgomery. We're not interested in leaping to the future. We need to take our course. Our course has been small steps. We've been very successful at it. We have to continue that way. Uh, talking about the light pollution and all the things, our eagles, all the stuff that's been going on, it's a sign. It's a sign that small is good. We need to really focus on what we do well. It is an LED signs. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm uh, Brian Dolan with Dolan and Murphy Real Estate in Aurora. I'm also uh, one of the founding members of the uh, Montgomery Economic Development Corporation. And I also would like to thank Marilyn for all of her contributions. And uh, you've done a tremendous job for uh, Montgomery. Um, I just, uh, I was at the Plan Commission when they explained uh, the ordinance. And, and that's kind of the things that I get involved in in the business uh, that I work in. And I first of all wanted to congratulate and thank uh, staff and the village for uh, keeping an open mind on this issue. Um, in the, you know, sometimes in the past uh, you come with new ideas and the door is shut before you even come in. So I want to congratulate you on that. Um, when I did listen to the ordinance, I listened closely and I thought uh, there was a lot of uh, concern for both sides of, of the uh, opinion. I thought the fact that uh, the key issue I saw was that uh, um, it's, these signs cannot go just anywhere in this village. Um, the key thing that staff did on this issue was they limited it to M2 zoning, I think. I think that is what I heard that, that evening. So if you would, would kind of be nice to, uh, if we had like a zoning map because you could actually point out the, di the districts that these signs can go in and then they limited how close they can be. So I think if you really study the zoning map, uh, there's only a few areas that these can go in. And I, I really think we need to concentrate on the ordinance rather than a person. Uh, you don't want to, because this does affect other people than, other than the, the uh, gentleman that was mentioned. I mean, this, this affects everybody. It's not just that person. I don't like to, to be bullied either. Um, but from a zoning, and a, and a municipality, you can't make an ordinance or not make an ordinance because of a person. You have to do it 
uh, over land use and whether it's a good or bad ordinance. And, um, you know, we'll find out whether, you know, it's, it's good or bad. Um, but I just want, the key thing, I just wanted to congratulate the staff for being open-minded, um, not shutting the door. And I think you've shown concern for the business community as well as the residents because you have limited it to where these can go. So um, really study that zoning map um, to see where they can go. And again, uh, it's been We're an honor. Out of time. Okay, Sorry. thank you. All right. Is there anybody out there? Okay. Good evening, Madam President. <clears throat> I guess I'm the the crux of the conversation for the record again my name is sean pettit i'm the assistant real estate manager with lamar outdoor advertising in gary indiana um, as many of you know and it's been well publicized this project was brought about by the kane county uh, highway department development of orchard avenue and keep in mind i hope everyone keeps in mind both the trustees and the residents of montgomery that that sign was out there for a very long time so the billboard itself right now is 10 foot by 22 foot. It is not illuminated. It's not illuminated because at the time, the electrical connection was very difficult probably when it was constructed a long time ago. Um, the land use and, and what's out there, uh, philosophically think of this. If we were not talking about an LED, would the village of Montgomery permit Lamar to move the sign onto Mr. Hammond's private property out of the right of way and continue to exist as a static non-illuminated billboard? At a 12 by 25 versus a 10 by 22, I can guarantee you probably 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 of you would not be able to tell the difference in the size between our 12 by 25 and our 10 by 22. Uh, a couple of facts, Madam President, and please indulge me for some information I think is, is important. I, I think Trustee Kazmarek asked if these were uh, buildable in other dimensions. Yes, they are. They're manufactured in 10 by 10, 11 by 23, 12 by 25s, 14 by 28s, 10 by 36, 14 by 48s, and 20 by 60s. We can buy from Dactronics in a variety of different sizes. We try to keep it down as low as we can on surface streets in a 12 by 25. Light meter and light pollution was brought up just now. Our LED illumin uh, illuminates 10 to 90 uh, lumens, uh, or about 0.3 foot candles. Uh, an average off-premise sign eliminate, uh, uh, gives off about 2.36 foot candles. An average speedway canopy gives off 13 foot candles based on light meter readings. An incandescent light uh, back to the lumens per, per kilowatt is about 13.6. A mercury vapor street light that you folks have here in, in Montgomery probably uh, gives off anywhere from 50 to 55 lumens per watt. So the light pollution that these spill off uh, is not that bad. Again, keep in mind that this is a text amendment ordinance. We have to go through the process later on. So again, look at your text as the previous speaker said. Look at the ordinance, not the person and or Lamar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, is there anyone else that would like to speak this evening? Hearing anybody? We'll go on, uh, moving on to the next item, which is a presentation of award from the Fox Valley Marine Corps for the Toys for Tots. And would you gentlemen come forward, please? Madam President, members of the board and the audience, uh, the Fox Valley Marines spent a lot of time here in Montgomery. We look forward to doing it again with Montgomery Days and the parades. And most of us live across the street in Aurora, but I do most of my shopping here in Montgomery. And you may remember uh, you're one of our, our favorite guests down at the Montgomery Breakfast Club. Uh, we just completed Toys for Tots. We couldn't have reached the numbers that we reached without the help of this village and your staff, along with the VFW across the street and other businesses in here. We had some pretty fantastic numbers this year. We gave two or more toys to over 51,000 children in Kane and DuPage County.
I'll remind you, we're just the messenger. We're Marines. We don't have to show up for formation anymore. We have our DD-214s. This gentleman standing next to me over here is a Gold Star father, and Tom Bulin here served on Marine One. Uh, this is a great community, not only for veterans, but without people like you, a lot of children would not have had Christmas. And when you take away the dream of a child, you hurt the nation because they will grow up with a certain amount of hostility. So on behalf of the United States Marine Corps, the Toys for Tots Foundation, and the Fox Valley Marines, we'd like to present you and the uh, city of Montgomery with this plaque. So if you want to come up here, I come over there, Madam President. No, you stay there. Come up there. Maybe we... Uh, my, my good friend Jason might want to get a nice picture oh, of you. Okay, very good, <laughs> very good. Okay, thank, thank you. you. And there's a list of uh, what we did. We also collected almost $50,000, which will help us next year in, in buying toys to make sure we have the proper toys for the kids. And thank you for your time. We look forward to seeing you this summer. And thank you very much for all the work you did. does your heart good when you hear of all these good things that that uh, are happening and that take place and and everybody jumps in and everybody works and and uh, a lot of volunteers these fellows are volunteers and and uh, you know we had this great big container full of toys out here and that's a wonderful thing and I know that every one of those kids that you gave toys to were very appreciative so thank you so much Moving on, our next item is a recognition of Festival of Trees winners and participating youth groups. So uh, to kick this off, I'm going to uh, be uh, passing out and giving out the awards. And then we'll follow up with uh, a little discussion and, and on the trees that we had our whole uh, building was decorated with so uh, and Jennifer this is Jennifer from the chamber mm -hmm. um, and so we are going to and did you want to say something before we you carry get into on this? it's your night you go for it <laughs> anyway um, we did have these beautiful trees and it's really a great way to decorate your building mm -hmm. because everybody brought in we had 20, 19 trees Everybody brought in these trees and they and decorated them here, which was wonderful because you know we didn't have to do it. We didn't have to take them down or anything. So uh, we had them in the front window up there, and we had them lit all at, at night. Uh, it was just and then in the lobby, of both layers uh, up and down, we had uh, Christmas trees, which was really nice. And we had some very unique trees. We'll talk a little bit about about them as we pass out the awards here. And uh, I, I need somebody from the police department to come forward. They actually got the first <laughs> place this year. <clears throat> Ada? Thank you. And Jackie? Thank you very much. Congratulations. Congratulations. I, I have to tell you, their tree was really <laughs> outstanding because they had these blue lights with sirens and then all this yellow <laughs> police tape around it caution. instead of a uh, caution tape, instead mm -hmm. of the nice shiny ribbon that some of us use. <laughs> Theirs was very different, but it really attracted uh, the attention of, of folks because they voted you first place. Thank so you. with that, I want to give this to you and then also
Wow, <laughs> thank you. And this is on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce. So thank you, thank very you so much. much. Thank you so and much. Thank you. And I need a box. <laughs> Anyway, too. congratulations. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. We one really more, appreciate it. Oh, he's got oh, one more. pictures. Smile. Okay. Sorry. No, she wants me. He wants me to take it. Oh. Off. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations. For second place, we actually had a tie, believe it or not. And uh, second place winner is the Orchard Road Animal Hospital. And would you believe they had all these little stuffed animals on their tree? <laughs> Really, it was, it was very, just very cute. I wish you could, well, the pictures are up here. I don't know if you can see each one of them. But anyway, um, and Lisa is here from the Animal Hospital. So we want to present her with, with the certificate and with the envelope that goes with it. So thank you very much for all your work and putting together a tree that helps us showcase our building here, and your tree was great. So. We always have fun coming up with something for this. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> and the next one that tied for second place was the Community Christian Church. And this was also, do we have somebody here? Oh, good. Sure. This was also a very unique tree. Um, it's actually right here. It's upside <laughs> down. <laughs> Hi, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Carter. Carter, okay. Yeah, Hi, Hi, Shannon. Yeah. It's nice to meet She's you. She's the creativity. She's the creativity. Oh. Yeah. It was very creative. Yeah, Jennifer really with the chamber. It. Congratulations. We had a lot of people mm -hmm. wonder if you actually devised this yourself. You couldn't really have bought it that way, or maybe. No, <laughs> it's just no. a fake tree that we put in upside down, and so it's yeah. Yeah. just like it sounds, an yeah. upside yeah. down tree. Yeah. But it created a lot of a lot of interest and a lot of speculation as to just how you did it. Yeah. So anyway, we want you to have this uh, award and uh, for your church, oh, thank your you. church. And also an envelope. Oh, thank you and so much. There's our oh, certificate. So congratulations. Thank you. I will add just one interesting comment. Um, the evening that we had a lot of people through for the village tree lighting, um, there was a couple that thought your tree would be perfect because their recliners could fit on both sides. So they were trying to figure out how they could make that happen in their, in their family room. So. Yeah, as, as Marilyn said, there was a lot of conversation. Oh. So <laughs> yeah. thank you so much yeah. for participating. Thank you, really yeah, thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. We appreciate you. <laughs> okay, you, you go ahead. Absolutely. As Marilyn said, um, my name is Jennifer Jones Senate, and I'm the president of the Greater Montgomery Area Chamber of Commerce. And uh, just to follow up a little bit, um, this is a great partnership that we instituted. This was our second year with the Festival of Trees. Um, as business partners in the community, we encourage everyone to participate. And we are really, really looking forward to even a bigger and better event next year. We want to actually have a challenge of running out of room to place trees. Um, again, a lot of community comments and business comments, and that's why the trees were displayed out front this year as well for people to enjoy the lights as they're going past on their way home. So thank you again. Um, we did also, from a standpoint with our village tree lighting that we had, we do actually have some of our participants um, that are here and would like to just recognize 
those groups because they did come out and provided wonderful entertainment for us that evening and it was a very actually tonight walking into village hall it reminded me a lot of the village tree lighting and that it was very uh, seasonably warm this year um, we still got rid of all of the hot cocoa and didn't have many cookies left over but the weather was wonderful again um, just to reach out I know Shannon you were just down here but we'd like to give you a certificate on behalf of you bringing the, the group out to participate and, and to make that such a wonderful holiday event for us. So there's that. If you can share that back with them, that'd be great. Right, thank you. Okay. Oh, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> And then we will. <laughs> the chamber will also be uh, sending a little uh, token of appreciation that will be mailed directly to you, okay, as well. So, and then um, I believe Laura is here from PAC 316. You could come on down. Again, we'd like to thank you for coming out. Great variety with what you guys always do for us. And again, there's a little uh, certificate of appreciation and uh, you. your little token will arrive in the mail. So we appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. And I believe uh, Principal Flash? Flock, I'm sorry. She's not here? She's not here? Come on down, why not? <laughs> Go for it. I thought she was gonna be here, so I apologize. Yeah, if you could go ahead. Um, this is on behalf of St. Luke's Lutheran School. Um, they, too, had a group that came and participated as well that evening. So if you could deliver sure. that and uh, share with her. There is a little note inside of there. So. Okay. okay, thanks. thanks. And um, I believe, is someone here from PAC 347 tonight? Okay, he didn't make it. Okay. Um, we did have uh, PAC 347, which is McDowell Elementary. They were also a participant for us. And then others that weren't able to attend tonight, Lakewood Creek Elementary School participated. St. Peter's School participated as well. And then a, um, a great enhancement to the evening was the jazz band from Oswego High School. And they were up here in the corridor, and the music um, just kind of really filled um, the inside of Village Hall, and, and the ambience was really, really nice. So again, those were the groups that participated. And um, again, They'll all be getting certificates as well as a little token of appreciation on behalf of the Greater Montgomery Area Chamber of Commerce. So if we could give them all a hand. <laughs> the other thing I would again like to just address um, Village President Michelini and uh, Village uh, Trustees, we have uh, encountered our year of togetherness and again, um, on behalf of myself and the Board of Trustees, we would like to thank you for letting us um, actually call Village Hall our, our home. Uh, it's been a wonderful partnership and uh, our businesses have really, really embraced the fact of being able to have the convenience to come here to Village Hall to do business and also to be able to do business with us um, as well on a chamber standpoint. So we're looking extremely forward to continuing that, that partnership and uh, from a, a motto standpoint, uh, promoting partnership for uh, business success. And again, uh, we would like to thank everyone um, for, for letting us call Village home. So thank you. And thank you, Jennifer. <clears throat> Okay, we're moving into the board commission committee reports, beautification committee, trustee Bond. Beautification will be meeting on February 20th at 6 p.m. We'll be talking about bluebirds and once again trying to attract more of them to come make their home in Montgomery. If any of you are interested in that or would care to volunteer. We also have scheduled our bridge flower planting for May 18th, that's a Saturday. And all of you are welcome to come join and help in that planting effort as well. Thank you. A Historic Preservation Commission will meet Monday, March 18th at 6.30 p.m. in the community room. 
Interna uh, Intergovernmental Committee, Trustee Lee. We'll meet uh, March uh, 25th, Monday, before the Village Board meeting in the community room. 6 p.m. Thank you. 6 p.m., yes. Yeah. Okay, under the consent agenda, minutes of the Village Board meeting of January 14, 2013, minutes of the executive session of January 14, 2013, Appointment by the Village President of Judy Brown, 214 Hartway Drive, to the Beautification Committee for a term from January 28, 2013 through July 31, 2014. Intergovernmental Agreement with the Aurora Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Recommendation of the Plan Commission on PC 2012-020Z on a zoning map update. Ordinance 1548 amending the Montgomery official zoning map. This is a waiver of first and passage on the second reading. And resolution 13-002 authorizing the acceptance of public improvements in the Fieldstone Place subdivision. And with that, I entertain a motion for approval. So move. Second. Moved and seconded. Take the roll, please. Trustee Hines. Yay. Trustee Brawley. Yes. Trustee Kazmir. Yay. Trustee Bond. Yes. Trustee Lee. Yes. Okay, uh, moving on, and, and I, should, I should say that if there's anybody that, that has already presented or was here for the first part of the uh, program, uh, you know, we'd, we'd love to have you stay, but, but you, could, you could leave at this point. So we'll give you a couple of minutes, uh, but actually, please stay. <laughs> we, we like audiences. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, the first item under items for separate action is a recommendation of the Plan Commission on PC 2012-024Z on a sign ordinance text amendment regarding sign amortization. And I'm going to defer to um, uh, Assistant Administrator Jamie Lederbeck. Thank you. Um, as you'll recall, this was discussed on January 22nd, and we, staff was directed to place this on the consent agenda, um, but we actually realized that you wanted to vote no on the recommendation. So this is before you, um, first the plan commission recommendation, of which you had discussed and decided that you actually wanted to um, get rid of the sign amortization schedule, um, at least for now. So. The course of action that, that you would be taking would be voting no on the plan commission recommendation and then approving the ordinance, which would strike the amortization schedule. So if there's any questions on this item, either item A or B, I'd be happy to answer them. Are there any questions at this point for uh, acting or for Administrator uh, Jamie Ledkovic? Questions? <clears throat> okay, I would uh, entertain a motion uh, and and uh, you, can entertain, we, you can entertain a motion to deny. To deny, that's <laughs> where I was stumbling. To deny this um, recommendation from the Plan Commission. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Take the roll, please. Trustee Bond? Yes. Trustee Lee? Yes. Trustee Hines? Yay. Trustee Brawley? Yes. Trustee Kismir? Yay. Okay, and, and the motion uh, passed. There it is. The next item was the ordinance 1549 amending section 12. Point eleven A six of the Montgomery Zoning Ordinance regarding sign amortization. This is a waiver of the first and passage on the second reading. And uh, we did just discuss this. And unless you have questions, uh, I'd go ahead and entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Take Trustee, the roll, please. Trustee Bond. Yes. Trustee Lee. Yes. Trustee Hines. Yay. Trustee Brawley. Yes. Trustee Kesmer. Yay. And the motion passes. The next item is a recommendation of the Plan Commission on PC 2012-023 on a billboard text amendment. And uh, I will defer to Acting Administrator Jeff Sofel. Thank you, President McLeany. Uh, staff doesn't have much to say on this. Just to clarify what you have in front of you tonight is the Plan Commission recommendation. Uh, the re recommendation of the Plan Commission was to not make any changes to the current ordinance. Um, which would prohibit billboards. Uh, so if that is what you are in favor of, then you would want to vote to approve this. 
If not, then I guess it would be a motion to deny, and then staff would go back and work on bringing you uh, an ordinance that would allow billboards under certain circumstances. Are there any questions or discussion? Yeah, so if we deny this, you can go back with the business owners and with staff and work on a better ordinance or an improved ordinance. We would go back and work on a special use ordinance or that would allow, you know, allow it under certain circumstances if that's what you directed us to do. And just uh, for the record, um, my preference, if that's your direction, move to table it rather than to deny it or do anything else. Just tell us that's what you want us to do. Move to table it and we'll talk with the staff. I prefer to table it. That's my recommendation. Uh, is, there, is there a second to a table? Okay. Um, so the, the mo motion fails, so uh, the table fails. So uh, is there a, I'll get my wording right, well, a it, recommendation to? In, in this case, it's either, because some people may want to approve the recommendation, which is to leave it alone. Other people may want to move to deny it because they want to take action. So, so if you want to either. leave it, if you want to leave it alone, you'll vote yes you on would, the motion. Well, no, there is no motion yet. I mean, not yet. If someone makes a motion to approve, to approve, okay. that would be to leave it as is. If someone makes a motion to deny, that would be to direct go, staff to make go some back changes. To make changes. Okay. Yes. I'm prepared to make a motion to accept the recommendation of the plan commission and uh, to, to make no change to our current ordinance. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Take the roll, please. Trustee Bond? Yes. Trustee Lee? No. Trustee Hines? No. Trustee Brawley? Yes. Trustee Kazmir? No. The motion fails. So three, three. no's. He knows. Three no's. Correct. So that motion to approve the recommendation failed. Mm -hmm. Now, there can be a second motion to deny the recommendation, and then we can continue to work with staff on developing an ordinance. Does that make sense? Right now, we have nothing. We you have know, you nothing. Have, you, you've not approved the recommendation, but neither really have you denied it. So... One thing that would be helpful if we are working on an ordinance would be to whether or not we, we like staff's recommended version of the ordinance or we want to allow more than what was recommended. Um, if you go back to the chart which talks about the three signs, Lamar sign, Mike Steck Center sign, and CBS sign, um, if there's any indication of which of those signs you would prefer to, to allow. I think the uh, CBS uh, Sign is a different situation, somewhat. So, shall we separate that one out? <coughs> Actually, it's not, isn't it? it? I it's mean, it's a, a similar situation. It's a land taking based on. It's the same same situation then. No, it, it's not exact. Different. It's not exactly the same. Neither is it no. completely different. There are <coughs> elements that are the same, but there are a few things that make it distinct. That's what we would need to, to really vet from the, from the board's perspective is, you know, the regulations that the staff has put together right now as, as presented, if you will, even though they were recommended against, would allow one of those three signs. If you want two of those three signs, we'd have to go back and tweak. If you want all three, we'd have to tweak a little bit more. And so that's what we kind of need direction from, from the board on is what are what do you want us to bring back to you, if anything? I do have a comment about that. As I read the staff recommendations, they only provide for electronic billboards. And that, to me, is an issue. I would far prefer to have the traditional type billboard and not the electronic digital billboards. So at the very least, I would like to have both kinds available for choice, but my preference would be to allow only the type of billboards that are illuminated and not self-illuminated. I would rather just not have billboards like we had discussed back in seven years ago, although I would like to see staff um, 
come back with, we're in a bad situation here. It puts the, the, the position of the village. Um, you have to listen to the businesses. Uh, they're the ones that really give us the taxes. They're the ones that everybody said, lower my taxes. Well, we're not going to lower them unless we have businesses that are in favor uh, fiscally. Um, and it's like, do you want a third of the pie or do you want all the pie? And, or do you want any, none of the pie if, if it happens? I'd, I would like to see staff come back with, uh, I think one of the companies said they would take, they own two billboards in the village. I think there's only eight or 10. I think he said he'd take one billboard and, or two billboards, get rid of both, just to put one modern one up. Well, in that case, we're getting rid of a billboard. And that was our main objective back in 2006, or five, or whenever we started this. Um, I'd like to see staff bring back a little better, uh, and also where where this, we had different comments tonight that there'd be signs like this all over the village. I would like to see where the M2, M1 is in the village and where people can put these. If they can't put them all over and we can only put them in two different places in the whole village, it's an entirely different thing than putting 20 of them up all over. Um, I was kind of under the impression that it was very limited and we would not, at 300,000 apiece, you aren't going to see more than one or two, and only because of what was taken uh, to replace a couple that we have. So, and I don't like to be in the position that the that the trustees are in right now, from somebody kind of painting us into a corner, and but there's. Sometimes you get painted into a corner and then you have to look at financially, fiscal, what are you going to do, uh, whatever is the best for the village. So I don't really know yet. I just got a few comments okay. that I'd make. Uh, okay, Matt, go ahead. And then I, then I think I'm going to have okay. something I want to say. I just wanted to come out and uh, reiterate to the folks that I'm, I'm not in support of this billboard. Uh, the LED billboard, the upgrade in this location. I, I kept an open mind when the ordinance was drafted. I went to the Planning Commission meeting and obviously the meeting since then, and that hasn't changed my mind. I think that we're in an unfortunate situation uh, due to what the landowner said publicly, what he'll do with us in the TIF district. And so the struggle that you guys are all seeing in our heads up here is what's the best thing that we could do for the future of Montgomery? What's the greatest good that we can do? Is it vote down the billboards or move forward with the TIF in that area. So I just kind of wanted to shed some light on that so everybody in this room knows that there's a lot going on. They're unfairly tied together, and I'm completely against that, but at the same time, that, that landowner has tied these issues together. So that's the struggle that I live with for the last few weeks on this, so. Well, point of clear. we've all lived with the same, uh, the same quandary, um, uh, Trustee Bond. It really won't be a quandary until we have a firm agreement that there will be a TIF. So the issues aren't tied together in any way in my mind. We have a comment but no agreement and I'm not prepared to take action just based on an undefined comment. I think one of the businesses that spoke tonight uh, and I've had different discussions with a lot of the businesses on Orchard, on Ockett, um, there will be a TIF, except like I say, you may have a third of a TIF instead of a full pie. So it's kind of, yeah, there'll be a TIF, but a lot of it has to do with water storage and everything else, and Mr. Hammond controls that. There's no doubt about it. It's, so the TIF's going to be there. It's just how big, and right now it's an $80 million, $80 million package deal and it ain't, it's not going to be that big anymore and uh, if that's the case. But you're right, there's no guarantees. So yeah, You know, I think what we're going to do, I think at this point, because you've all brought up more and different issues, um, I would 
prefer that you table it at this time and so staff can come back and, and filter out some of these comments that have been made uh, because I don't think we're, you know, we're in any place to move, move forward on anything. So um, do you have a comment or? Well, no, I mean, it's just, we are in a tough situation. You guys, this is I mean, 8% of Americans want more jobs in America. And when you start doing stuff like this, tell them businesses that you can't put up billboards or it has to be a certain way. Heck, we just got a notice a couple of days ago that Lion Metal's going to be shutting down in 60 days. There's 80, 80 people out of a job right now in Montgomery in February. So what do you guys want us to do? You want us to try and create jobs? Or you just want to say, okay, we just want to be a small town? But one of the biggest manufacturing industries in Montgomery, besides Caterpillar, is Lion Metal. Well, you know, so I just, we're, we're off the track now. Yeah, uh, Andy, uh, make your... Mary, that, that doesn't have bearing on this particular issue. I know what you're saying right. about the jobs, creating jobs, but that's not what the issue is tonight. So I, I would entertain a motion to table this, to table this so that staff can come back and can bring back information to us that answers some of, uh, uh, Trustee Lee brought up some more additional comments and questions. So uh, that, that would be my, my, my instruction at this time. So I'll make a motion to table. Okay, it's yeah, moved and is there a second I'll over second. here? Or moved and seconded, okay. Take the roll, please. Trustee Bond. Yes. Trustee Lee. Yes. Trustee Hines. Yay. Trustee Raleigh. Yes. Trustee Kazmier. Yay. Okay, the table carries. I, I think we, since we did get involved in another issue here, I'm going to ask our attorney to make a clarification on the last statement that was made about Lion Metal. Just a slight clarification on Lion, because I think it came out maybe more strongly than you had intended it, which is to say they're going to be shutting down in 60 days. That, that's not the fact. They had to, they're statutorily required to send out a notice that says they could shut down. But at the same time, they have filed for reorganization, and their intent in all their filings is that they sell the business as an ongoing venture. So the expectation or the hope would be that those jobs continue on. But the jobs would continue on, at least at this point in time. So I just wanted to make that clarification and uh, not have uh, erroneous uh, information going out in the press and so on. Um, so anyway. <coughs> Uh, you all, you're all clear on the issues? Okay. Um, we are going to postpone the next item, Stormwater Basin Maintenance Contract Extension Proposal. And <clears throat> is there any new or unfinished business to come before the board this evening? Yes, uh, Trustee Barnes. Just a comment. I think you might be able to do without my weather radio. I noticed about two hours before the bad weather hit yesterday that the snow crews were out. I saw the trucks and I thought, hmm, <laughs> they must know something I don't. And sure enough, they did. So good job. <laughs> yeah, pass that along to the guys. <laughs> Any other uh, new or unfinished business? If not, um, we do not have an executive session this evening. I'm feeling kindly and we're going to, uh, I'm going to announce uh, future meetings and then a ask for uh, adjournment. Um, Village Board meeting is Monday, February 11th, 2013 at 7 p.m. Committee of the Whole meeting Wednesday, February 13th at 7 p.m. Plan Commission meeting Thursday, February 14th at 7 p.m. Committee of the Whole meeting Tuesday, February 19th at 7 p.m. And village board meeting Monday, February 25th at 7 p.m. And I entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Moved and seconded. Take the roll, please. Trustee Hines. Yay. Trustee Brawley. Yes. Trustee Yay. Trustee Bond. Yes. Trustee Lee. Yes. And we are adjourned. Good job, Minnie. How do you like that? Eight o'clock. <laughs> uh, I know I'm losing my voice is what's, is what's happening. <clears throat> I almost had to use, use no, Pete's inhaler, puffer. Uh, yeah, you know